thank you so much for agreeing to do this. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Ganchi Plans. Today is a slightly different video. Um, I have with me my sister, Emily. Say hi. Hey. <laughs> you, uh, if you've been a long time subscriber, she has actually had a video like a few years ago showing off your buja back when you were like planning your wedding. Yes, right? yes. So Emily got married in 2018 and then had her first baby in 2020. Um, so we have that in common, which is super fun as sisters to have babies at the same time. Um, but it's also a heck of a year to have a baby. We both had our little ones in 2020, uh, three months apart. And so to, that's what we're talking about today is sort of the experience of COVID babies, COVID pregnancy, um, and basically pandemic pregnancy. I have never had COVID that I know of, um, but Emily has. And so we're going to talk about similarities and differences and all of that. And just, uh, it's been an interesting ride. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, it was my first, so I don't really know a lot different. I mean, I guess I, I haven't had the experience of both the pregnancy. With right. Them, so. Hopefully you will have it yes. by the time we have more kids, this will all be over, but, um, I'm just going to really briefly go over my experience and then we'll move on to yours. Like if anybody on my channel can go back and watch all of my bump dates to give some, you know, more details. But basically, um, we were pregnant before the pandemic hit. I think we conceived in December. So I think COVID may have already existed, but nobody knew about it. Um, and so my first couple of visits, like my husband was able to come to my very first visit and see the baby's heartbeat, which was great. But then later on, like from pretty early on, he wasn't able to come to anything. He wasn't able to come to the anatomy scan. Um, and we were always concerned the whole time about what, um, was going to be, it would, whether he'd be available or able to come into delivery or if, he, you know, all of that. So what we decided to do personally, we decided to just lock down everything from four weeks before my due date. Um, and we didn't see anybody in the house for like a month, uh, before the baby, uh, just to make sure that we were completely negative, no chance of catching anything, um, before the baby came so that we wouldn't have to worry about being positive in the hospital. Um, and so, like I said, we, we haven't caught it. Uh, we started loosening up our personal restrictions, uh, when the baby got her two month shots. Um, and at that point things were getting worse. So only now are we really starting to open up and, and live life a little bit more. But um, how was your experience and the timing and all that? Yeah, well, um, basically, you know, we, we had the, that, uh, you know, people will joke about it, you know, the, the quarantine baby, because you know, it was a little after the quarantine started. Uh, we had been trying for seven months, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that was when we got pregnant um, was as, at the end of March. Um, the um so he wasn't he did actually um i did get him in for for a an, an unofficial ultrasound because um our mom works for a place that does ultrasound so she was able to get him in uh to see the baby once um when the baby was really little i want to say seven weeks i think too little to see limbs or anything just a little heartbeat um and then um you know everything else you know i was on my own for um I did, uh, there are places that like the, I call it the vanity ultrasound, <laughs> you can go and get, like photos taken of your baby. Um, so I wanted us to like find out the sex together. So, uh, we went to one of those places when I was 20 weeks to, uh, to do an ultrasound together to find out the sex uh, before I did the anatomy scan. So that was nice. I'm glad we did that together. Um, cause to her, for me, the anatomy scan kind of sucked. I like was like feeling faint and everything yeah. from the pressure of the abdomen. It would have been nice, obviously, for him to have been there. But, um, um, uh, just about the boutique place, would you recommend, like, would you do that again if it weren't a pandemic? How did you like the experience? I might. I might. You know, it's not too expensive. I think it was, what, like 60 bucks, 70 bucks, something like that. For the 3D? And, you, know, you, get, you know, you get color photos to take home of the, you know, 3D images. And, you know, uh, my husband wasn't, he's like, eh, it's, a, it, it's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like he was like I would be looking at the pictures all lovingly, and he's like, I don't know, I doesn't like it. Just like it. <laughs> but um, so I, I probably wouldn't, but I'm glad we did. I don't know. Yeah. In context, I think it was a good year for boutique places, and it's good yeah. that you were able to get in. Like, because I feel like 
that's the sort of thing that would have been shut down during Purple Tier. Yeah, uh, the I don't know exactly what the law was, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, but a lot of places um, they were they were allowing you and one other person to come. Uh -huh. You couldn't have like your whole family come in and do it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think some places offered like live streaming to your family. Uh, um, fun. <laughs> I went to. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so once it went back into purple tier, I was supposed to be working from home those last few weeks, but once it went into purple tier, which is a little before Thanksgiving, my work sent me home to work from home those last few weeks before I were to take maternity leave. Um, should, should we tell then, people what purple tier is, by the way? We live in California <laughs> where we have a color-coded tier system as far as reopening and economic stuff. So purple tier is the very worst. And so uh, you, your due date was in December. Yes. Yeah. And that yeah, was right around year. Christmas. It's the worst case rate we've had for the entire year was in December. Yeah. So, yeah. So starting in November, I started working from home. Um, but we did have someone over to our house and we did actually end up catching COVID from that one person who came to our house. Um, you were 38 weeks. I, I was, yeah, I think I was 38 weeks. So, you know, I was watching the, the, the calendar at that point. Um, cause it's like, okay, if you catch it, you know, I knew I was going to catch it from him because, you know, he first, the friend called and said he had a fever next day. He called and said, he had a positive test. And then, you know, the next day after that, my husband was feeling, had a cough and was feeling sick. So it was, it was very quick. Yeah. Um, and I'm like counting the calendar going like, okay, is it going to be 14 days before you know I have the baby? Well, of course that means that I didn't get any of my last OB visits. <laughs> so yeah. my last OB visit was at 37 weeks. They asked if they wanted to, if I wanted a cervix check, I didn't get a cervix check that day. So I didn't have any idea this last two weeks what was going on <laughs> in there you know um besides just kind of like okay if you're having signs of labor go to the hospital basically and um and then i was watching the calendar because i didn't want to go into labor while i was still sick right and the cdc guidelines at the time were if you were had were feeling better and you didn't have a fever and it had been 10 days since your onset of symptoms then you were um you were considered not contagious anymore. So that was the calendar I was looking at. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, it's, you know, and, and I was not going on walks. I was not trying to induce labor because I wanted him to not come. Um, so then it had been 10 days and I think the doctor was like still not wanting to be come in and it had been 14 days. And she's like, okay, she had me go to the hospital to do a non-stress test on my due date um, because she didn't want me in the office. So even though, yeah. It had been that period of time. And according to the CDC guidelines, I was clear. Of course, at that time, no one had been vaccinated. So I do understand why doctors are more cautious than other people, because if they catch it, then they can't take care of anyone. You know, they but could I be feel like there, there should at least be some sort of contingency, you know, like I feel like you should have had that non-stress test sooner or some sort of, you know, like, couldn't they have done some sort of OB visit at the hospital where they're more equipped? You know? Well, that's what they did. Um, um, so, okay. So first I went in for a non-stress test on my due date, which was the 21st. And, um, and I kind of thought they knew, um, and I had passed the quarantine deadline. So I didn't say anything at the front desk. Uh -huh. <laughs> they kind of had like a whole little screening questionnaire, but he didn't ask me uh -huh. screening questions, um, when I went in and then I kind of went up there and I was masked and everything. And I didn't say anything to anyone about the fact that I had COVID because I was past that deadline where the CDC says I should be okay. Right. Well, then when they're doing the non-stress test, it comes up. I, I mention it. I feel like I should, I guess. And I mention it, you know, as we're talking and she goes, oh, like, you know, how long ago was that? And she's like, has it been 14 days? Because it hadn't yet been 14 days, but it had been more than 10. And so they decided to test me then and there. Um, she came back in with the, like, with the, the N95 mask or like double mask N95 and all of this and did the test. Um, and then uh, I think they did the quick response one. And later that day it came back that it was positive. So I hope they didn't have to send that. Or, I, I'll bet I'm betting they sent that nurse into quarantine. I, I don't know for sure, uh, who knows? <laughs> but um, it, my test came back positive. So, um, 
of course, they saw that as that's the day that they see me having a positive test, even though I had had a positive test back on I think the ninth. The ninth? No, it wasn't that far back, but it was um, the thirteenth, I think. So. Uh, no, that, that's not right, because it was the 21st. I don't know. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a whirlwind, I'm sure. So speaking of just before we move on to labor and delivery and all yeah. that, um, so were your symptoms different from Sebastian's? Do you think like pregnancy affected what symptoms you got? No. <laughs> I mean, our symptoms were almost the same. Yeah. Uh, that's my husband, by the way. I don't know if you should please talk to me. Um. He had fever for two or three days and um, was just really tired after that. I had a fever for only two days and then was fine after that. So um, maybe he had just... really bad night sweats that I didn't have. Oh. But I think that just might, I don't know. Maybe his exposure was more extreme than yours. Maybe, maybe. Because you were you know, keeping your distance from him once you knew that he'd been exposed. Yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. But... <laughs> Do you think that your doctors were sort of blasé about seeing you because you were an uncomplicated, you know, prima gravita and like not <laughs> um, at, at risk too much? Or do you think like I just worry that if you had really, really needed those visits, you know, if you were yeah. at risk for preeclampsia or something and they didn't want to see you because it was just too much hassle to deal with mm. quarantine with, you know, like a. Uh, PPE um, and stuff, you know? They might have done what they ended up doing, which was seeing me um, under full protective gear and everything at the hospital. Yeah. Um, but they didn't until you they were... Did, they did, actually, a few days later. So after after that day when I tested positive, uh -huh. um, they had she had me come back. Okay. Um, and I don't remember why that was, if she was concerned or if she just wanted to actually see me. She hadn't seen me and I was past my due date. And what was nagging at me this entire time was something she had said when she had just stuck the ultrasound wand, I think really briefly at that 37 visit, 37 week visit. And she said, oh, I don't think these babies gonna go past due, not with the placenta looking like that. She made some type of a comment that was going through my mind this entire time. Cause you didn't going, get that clarified. Mom, the placenta is COVID, cause I've heard COVID can affect the placenta as well. Right. And can age it and can have effects on it. So I'm having concerns about my placenta and if I'm going to have um, some type of an issue with that and have the baby have, have problems. Um, yeah. So, um, so I guess uh, the moral there she is didn't see what that was at the time. Yeah. So, like she, she wasn't over the phone. I was doing phone visits with her, uh -huh. her Skype visits and she wasn't expressing concern. Um, yeah. So yeah, if I had had, you know, I, I had, I, had, you know, I was, what's it called? negative on the group beta strep. So That's um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't have, you know, the gestational diabetes or any of that preeclampsia symptoms or anything like that. So That's of course, you know, I wasn't taking my um, blood pressure at home for those visits mm -hmm. like I would be if I was in the office. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess, guess as long know, as you can still see. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But yeah, that was a worry for me, but um, yeah. Yeah, I think it was kind of for them. I I was probably in her office the only, the only patient, COVID positive. So I I don't know for sure, but yeah, it just kind of seemed to be like, okay, we don't want you in here. Right. Our aunt who works in the NICU told me at some point um, around then that it was something like five percent of of moms coming in were positive. Wow. Yeah, this is at the hospital that I delivered at. She works there. So I don't know about your hospital or whatever, but, you know, we're not too far away from each other. I would think it would be, you know, and not like a a number that you would not be super surprised to see somebody come in, you know? Yeah. Yeah, obviously, yeah. If you're taking more precautions, you know, if you're expecting to deliver soon. Yeah. So that's, they have, they had a, a room in the hospital that was that negative pressure, mm. I think they call it, where they have like a fan blowing up the air. Yeah. And that's where you had um, to labor? Yeah, so they had they had me come back in on the 24th mm -hmm. for Christmas, Christmas to do another test, do another non-stress test. And then uh, my actual doctor came in and they were in like the hazmat suits. Uh -huh. uh, she was in like the hazmat suit. And, like with the uh, the pipe coming out the back? Yeah, the, the pipe coming out the back. 
Yeah. yeah. I think it's called a pap break. And um, wow. so was the, the nurse. It's <laughs> like ET. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They came in with a hazmat suit, and that day they, they she did order an ultrasound, so they did the ultrasound. Um, and, you know, she checked my cervix, and, you know, there wasn't any progression or anything. So, But then it was that later that day that she called me and said that the results of the ultrasound were suggesting I should go and get um, induced because she was worried again about placenta and about some of the fluid levels. So okay. I ended up getting, getting induced. And so, of course, I was back in that same room for the induction for three days or four days. Yeah. It, was it really? Oh, you is it the same room for postpartum too then? Yeah. So yeah, okay. they have they have the whole labor delivery and um, postpartum all in the same room, which oh. I like at, oh, at that nice. hospital. I, I've I, I don't see, uh, considering how it all worked just fine in that one room, I don't see why other hospitals actually transfer you. I mean. Yeah. Maybe it just has to do with the staff. I don't know. Yeah, it could be that it's just maybe they have fewer. Um, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? I don't run hospitals. But uh, yeah, so was, I don't know if you want to tell the gruesome details. It was it was a saga. I mean, not gruesome, but just it was a very long labor for you. Yeah. And I guess inductions kind of are that way. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I was, I was not wanting to be induced, you know, initially, I was hoping to have more of a natural labor, I was hoping to not have to, I was hoping to use like to have like birthing tubs in there, which were closed, birthing tubs were not allowed because of COVID. I don't know why you can't clean a birthing tub or something. Uh, It's probably more complicated to clean out the jets and stuff. Maybe that might be it. So um, um, I don't think they do water births or anything, but they have the tubs you can labor in and um, and then, um, because it was an induction, I wasn't able to, um, leave the side of my bed. Basically I had about a three foot area I could walk in. Yeah. So, uh, and of course then the whole time we were there, once my husband came, he was not allowed to leave. Uh-huh. So he was able to come. That was my greatest fear was that my husband wouldn't be able to come yeah, and same. I would be laboring alone. Same. Yeah. Um, cause I had, I had read a story of someone who was in like the little triage room, the entire labor and delivery. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. but you know, he was able to be there. It's just, he couldn't leave and we had to wear masks anytime anyone else is in the room. That's pretty standard. Um, yeah. They, they were not in the hazmat suits anymore, but they were wearing, um, the N95, I think with the other one underneath and they were wearing the face shields and then they were, wearing, they were gowned up, uh-huh. but they weren't in like the hazmat. Okay. Um, and I think they were wearing, you know, some sort of a cap or something. So every time they came in, you know, they had to take a minute to gown up and come in. Interesting. Um, so that was like a little bit of a worry. I'm like, oh, what if my, you know, what if there's some fetal distress and it takes them like, you know, five minutes to come in. Yeah. But, you know, they, she did assure me. She's like, hey, if we see something on the monitor, you know. We're going to be in there. If it's really bad, we'll come in. Yeah. So, um, and then one of the nurses, one of the nurses told me, um, near the end about, she says, well, because you're positive, we recommend that you stay six feet away from the baby, that you always are masked when you're with the baby. And um, I forget what else she said, you know, but my husband and I were kind of like, well, no, it's not going to happen. We don't have concerns about that. Cause at that point it had been over two weeks since we both had it. Uh-huh. Um, and you explained that to the nurses and they were still recommending the same procedures. Well, she, she, she did say, well, you know, that it was up to us, you know, um, no one, no one pushed us on that afterwards. Uh-huh. And, um, even by the time I was like pushing my mask had fallen down and no one was like mm-hmm. giving me a hard time about it. So I think they were a little bit, I think by the end of the whole thing, when they realized I wasn't having any symptoms at all of COVID, mm-hmm. they were all becoming a little more lax, a little bit they less. I believed you <laughs> about the timeline. Yeah. So I feel like they should I, have, you know, how you've got your immunization card. I feel like you should have the opposite of that. But like, this is when I had it card. Yeah. Well, like I did print out my like positive test from the county, but, um, and I, but I, you know, when I told people about it, they weren't, they're like, weren't budging. Uh, the worst of it was that the pediatrician, we then, we checked out after 24 hours. And so we had to go to the pediatrician for his day two appointment. And they wouldn't let me in. And so the baby couldn't be breastfed. It was it was a whole nightmare. <laughs> we ended up having to go back over and over again because the baby was malnourished because he hadn't been fed. <laughs> that one still makes me so baby. angry. Yeah, he was his blood sugar was low because they wouldn't yeah. let you inside to feed him. And the funny thing is, of course, me and my husband had both had it. But I had tested positive more recently. 
And so because my test was more recent, they said I couldn't go in. Yeah. Those yeah. are the things that are so and ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and they don't it. test the dads if the mom comes in positive. And so, like, the mom's not allowed to touch the baby, but the dad is. But no one ever knows if the dad had it or not. Yeah. It's almost like people know that it's just kind of a formality, like security theater. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Cause you know, the CDC recommendations say one thing, they say you should be clear, but it's like, well, you know, you had a positive test. So. Right. And so they say you should be clear, but they never say what after that, you know, and it's still up to the, the institution, the hospital, the doctor's office, whatever, to make their own procedures and rules which I understand, you know, in a broad abstract sense. <laughs> anyway, every time I think about that pediatrician appointment for you, I, I get angry on your behalf all over again. <laughs> so did you um, feel like you had to take precautions and stuff after the baby came home? Were you allowing visitors right away because you figured that he had some immunity from you or? Um, yes. I felt like he, I felt like he probably had some immunity. So I was feeling, I, I was feeling, oh, we're pretty much invincible, right? Which I know that's kind of a really blase attitude. Right. So, um, I would be, a, a couple people who came and brought meals um, would kind of stand at the door and I would stand, you know, on the stairs, you know, probably 10 feet away from them and show okay. up the baby pretty much. That works. Uh, but the in-laws I did, you know, the, the parents and the, the grandparents, those sets of grandparents I let come over. I let come over thinking. <laughs> yeah, it's your house. You're allowed to turn the yeah, lights. So. Yeah. I invited them over. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, that's one benefit, I guess, of having it so you know that, like, you don't have to worry about it. You still have all kinds of other things that can make a baby sick early on. But, yeah. like, People with... are wearing masks. And yeah. Being more conscious, exactly. So. Yeah. So that was, like, that's yeah. actually the one thing that... Um, that I was thinking about the other day because we were at church and, you know, the, the capacity has kind of gone up. So people are a little closer together. And of course the baby's not wearing a mask. And I'm not, again, I'm not really thinking about COVID for him so much, but other stuff that he still needs to get some of the shots. So mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I should, yeah, it's a little, <laughs> yeah. uh, a little bit more. We're, little we're thinking more. about those things more now too, than like, you know, previous when we had our two year old, 2018 it was a bad flu year that year or whatever but we weren't really making choices so much like we decided not to go to the fair that year you know because mm -hmm. of the big crowd but like other than that we weren't really worried about taking her out in public and getting sick but now we're kind of thinking about that more because you know maybe that's a good thing that we're more cautious yeah you know and it might be that we're you know people will I don't know, be wearing masks during flu season? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like we should at least normalize, like, even if you are you have to go to work when you have a, a cold, wear a mask. At very least. Yeah, you know, that, that that's a good point. Yeah, because it, it, I think it used to be if you see someone wearing, like, a mask, it's like, oh, dear, that person must be sick. Stay away from them. And, right, or I, it always seemed like a precautionary measure when I saw people wearing masks. Yeah, that I right. would be like, oh, that, that person, man, they, they must be really worried about something. I don't know. They're kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, obviously they were the smart ones. We know that now. <laughs> uh, I, I remember going into to uh, to the doctor when I had some type of a flu or something. And it was at the time that uh, I forget if it was swine flu or bird flu. But mm -hmm. they were like, as soon as I'm like, they, you know, they're like, I'll put on the mask. And, mm -hmm. so. That's good. But it wasn't that, you know, everyone was wearing the mask when it was fine flu or bird flu. It was right. just... Right. I think we yeah. should normalize mask wearing in the future a little bit more. A little bit more. So um, how is your baby shower? Now, forget I'm here. I'm the one who kind of put it together. And it was you know, lackluster. Anyway, what did you think about missing out on a baby shower? Um, <laughs> it was a bummer, it huh? Would, it would have been nice. Yeah, it would have been nice to have a baby shower. I I felt bad. I felt bad about inviting people to a virtual baby shower because it feels like it's a gift grab because it's like, it's not a real party. There's not party games and there's not yeah. hors d'oeuvres. And it's just kind of like, oh, I invite you to come and say hi to me and give me a gift. You know? yeah. So I think that was kind of the element of it most that I, I felt kind of bad for. Um, <laughs> So, um, but I was, um, 
I was glad, you know, the people who came were able to come. Um, and, uh, and and kind of, when I say came again, it was a virtual shower. Yeah. <laughs> we attended the virtual shower. Um, and that wasn't, a bad, generous, that so. wasn't a bad turnout. Mm-hmm. No, although some people, because we did it like a, a live video where we were opening the gifts. And some of the people were commenting on the live video. And then we were going to do a video hangout with everyone afterwards. And some people didn't show up for the video hangout. So I felt yeah. bad because so we could talk to them. And I don't know. It was either technical issues or they didn't realize the format of it. But. Yeah, who knows? But yeah, it, was, it could have been worse. But anything else about your first pregnancy or bummed that you got to that you had to miss out on? Um, I mean, I guess just everything in general, you know, the socializing people, you know, uh, so socializing and socializing in general, but, um, yeah, people kind of getting to see you as you're kind of growing and talking with the baby, you know, you would kind of do video calls sometimes and stand up to show them the belly or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was weird com- comparing the two experiences. I don't know. Like, in some ways, I, it's easy enough to focus on, to distract yourself by focusing on the things that are better about not having people, like, you know, asking you impertinent questions. Like, I have this one coworker who, um, she has her own grandkid now, so uh, I probably don't have to worry about this as much. But she just would, you know, ask me a lot of questions in the, the sweetest, well, most well-meaning way, but it would start to get, like, a lot, um, mm-hmm. you know. And so that now this year I'm like, I probably should have been more grateful for someone taking an interest in the first place. Yeah. You know, and I was still going out to grocery stores and stuff. Mm. Um, and, and, um, at the time I, I wasn't doing as many grocery pickups. Now that we have a baby, I'm doing mostly grocery pickup. (laughs) Yeah. Not having to take Um, the baby out of the car seat. The best I've been doing it since before the pandemic. Oh, you take the baby out of the car seat? No, grocery pickups. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, you know, the few people that did kind of, it, it was only a few people that would comment. And, you know, I actually was, because it was only a few people, I was kind of like flattered. People, not flattered, but I was grateful kind of when people would comment and be like, oh, are you pregnant? And like, you know. Yeah. Of course, then when they go like, oh, what do you do? Oh, do you have a name picked out? What's the name? Is it a- and you're like, <laughs> okay, like, I don't know you. I don't know the name of my unborn child. <laughs> Do you want to ask my name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had like uh, some neighbors because I was doing a lot of walking later on, later on. Some neighbors would comment in before mm-hmm. and after. The the yeah. uh, mailman, whenever we'd see him, would ask me some questions. And yeah. So it was, that's a small amount. It was, it was those were the people who live nearby who I would talk to instead of like the people at church or the people at work. Yeah. 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 But it was something. Yeah. Yeah, same with us, the neighbors as yes on the walk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess my last thought question, do you have any thoughts about what this generation of kids is going through and like what life's going to be like? I think about it sometimes how like, you know, masks are 100% normal to our babies, you know, because they've never known anything different. Even my two-year-old um, has been wearing masks since, you know, just before she turned two. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so it's normal and she's like really good at it and just little things like that. And unfortunately she's not in school yet, but. Yeah. Um, I, I'm hopeful that, especially for the little one, you know, you know, my little one who's only a few months old, that it won't have really much of an impact because I mean, I, I don't even like that when we go out in public, you know, I'll be wearing a mask and I can't smile at him, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, he can't see me smile. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've actually like, lowered my mask just to smile at him. Uh-huh. Talking, but, um, cause yeah, I mean, that's, I, I would feel like that's the one thing for the babies is not seeing facial expressions and mm-hmm. seeing people's mouths moving and stuff, which again, I don't think is so much of an issue cause we're not so much going out and, and being in places where we're masked and mostly at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully things will continue and then he to is, you know, He has been seeing his, his grandparents, so mm-hmm. it's not like he's not meeting anyone else. He has meeting his grandparents. And he's met um, Bridget. Hmm? He's met Bridget. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> his, his cousins. cousins, his cousins. Um, so, yeah, I'm hopeful that by the time um, uh, eventually, you know, it, masks will not become ubiquitous everywhere 
Sorry, ubiquitous is that the wrong word? No, I think that's right. <laughs> yeah. And you it's, know, and yeah. we'll be able to play with each other. Yeah. 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 I'm so glad that our girls are, um, you know, with the babysitter and they're able to have some socialization with kids roughly their own ages. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's a tough year when you're locked down and you don't see anybody or it's anybody your own age, which will be more concerned, hopefully, by the time like Isaac needs, you know, socialization with kids his own age to learn how to share and stuff like things will be more yeah. or less back to normal. But yeah, that's what, that's what I'm hoping. So. Yeah. This will just be one of those stories you'll tell him every year on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, we've got some pictures of them and their gowns and everything with the baby. And yeah. Yeah. No. Well, is there anything else that you wanted to bring up? Um, no, yeah, just that I, I think I might've mentioned it earlier, but, or you mentioned it, but that I kind of feel like for me, I'm almost grateful. I, I am kind of grateful it worked out the way it did. Maybe it would have been nice if I had even had it a little bit earlier so that maybe I wouldn't be still testing positive in the hospital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but to be able to have had it, had a mild case of it, and then hopefully be passing those um, immunity onto the baby. Um, mm -hmm. That gave me kind of a little piece, actually. So, yeah. yeah, that's good. Not, we're not we, we're not recommending know, anybody go out. Not, oh, sorry. We're, I was going to say, we're not recommending anybody go out and try to catch COVID <laughs> before they have their baby. That's, to be clear, but if you can, I know, but I know now a lot of people are, are getting the, able to get the vaccine and stuff yeah. like that, which I know I, I, I hadn't been tested on, on pregnant women and children, all of that. So there's kind of, a, right. I think they're starting uh, a study now, finally. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Are you planning to get it when you know during, while you're breastfeeding? I'm, I'm not planning on getting the vaccine. Um, just because I feel like I've already got the immunity that I'm going to get. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not, the vaccine isn't like proven to like, give more immunity than having had COVID. Uh -huh. So, um, but that's just kind of a, yeah. A personal you talk to your own doctor and all that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope that this conversation was interesting and enlightening and just sort of fun for the people watching. Um, leave your comments below. I want to hear your stories too. If you or anyone in your life has had a baby in 2020 or 2021 now. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the uh, playlist of my bump dates. And uh, I think that's it. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Sorry about all this. We're, this is all about the content, not about the presentation. So I hope that you stuck. If you stuck around this far, that's why you're here. <laughs> all right. See you in the next video on Thursday. Bye.